And then all of a sudden, he's asking that I, I come on top of him. And as soon as I'm on top of him, he's, he's on top of me. You know, it was just like a split of a second thing. He's on top of me. He raped me. And unfortunately, fortunately, I fell pregnant. And it was when my mom explained to me the process of how a person gets pregnant. I was like, oh, that thing, that is what my dad does to me. And he's been doing it since I started living with him. In the bathroom, when he was done, in the bathroom, there was already water inside. I don't know. Maybe it was when I was watching TV and he put me into that water and he washed me thoroughly. He washed me and probably that washing took about an hour because I f now when I realized he was, he was trying to get rid of the evidence in case anything happened. Josie, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, Justice? Um, I'm fantastic. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you so much. Um, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm just cold. Oh, <laughs> but I'm okay. Need a jacket? No. Oh, maybe I can <laughs> just no, it's fine. Jacket. I'm just... Maybe TKJ can give you ja <laughs> his jacket. Um, you've got an interesting story, um, but I really want us to maybe go back a little bit so that somebody who's watching this, they can... Yeah get to know who you are. Right. Who are you? Um, your, my name is Zizo Isabel Ozam Ableni. Um, I was born in 1994, uh, in February. Um, I'm a child who um, grew up um, under a loving um, family, my maternal side of the family. Just, yeah, that is who I am, basically. Like, I am this person um, who went through a lot, but yeah. at the end persevered and came out to be the woman that I am today. Um, I grew up in the Eastern Cape. In the Eastern Cape? Yes. Um, growing up as uh, CISO, um, how was it like? Um, it, was, it, was, it was good because my mom and my dad were not married. Okay. So I was conceived in college you know um they met in college and i was conceived and then my mom's um because she was still in in varsity i i had to go live with my grandparents yeah. so that is the life that i was used to living with cousins and my mom would come and visit um when she gets paid at work and so that is how i grew up in that type of setting of a family yeah yeah take me through your childhood man i feel like there's a lot mm -hmm. you know that happened in your childhood you know you know the best memories that happened in your childhood your relationship with your mom um, your relationship with your dad as well. How was those relationships? All right. So um, typically when my mom um, told my dad that she was pregnant, my dad didn't want anything to do with the pregnancy. And she, he was like, no, this is not my child. You know how it goes. And then I went, I was born and I lived with my grandparents and life was just like that for me yeah. up until I turned maybe four or five and I was introduced to this man now who I get to call my father because before then um, I knew uh, the father figures that I knew in my life were my uncles. Um, those were the fa father figures I knew, but I knew that they were not my fathers because um, I was with my cousins who were their daughters and sons and whatnot, and they called them Odada, and I knew how to call them not as dad, you know. So I knew that I didn't have a dad, but I did have male figures around me, especially with my grandfather, too. He was also around. So when I'm like five years old, I get introduced to this man who is going to be like, now this is your father. And I was so excited to for myself to actually have someone that I can call mm. a father. And it was just an exciting journey for me. And my dad was just incredible in terms of making sure that I had everything that I needed. And um, he was he was teaching 
at the same town that I I went to school at. So he was so, a teacher? Yes, he was okay. a teacher. So he would come visit me during my school hours, and it was just that relationship between a father and a daughter. Mm. Um, so life continued, and then in the year 2001, he asked that I go live with him because um, he didn't like that I went to, to rural schools. So he was also moving to another town in Mtata, so he was like, why don't you move with me and just for you to get to Model C schools and then, yeah, to get a better education. So my family already knew him and what he was capable of doing. So they were very, they Calm, didn't, yeah. yeah, like they were like, oh, okay, no, it's fine. That's a great opportunity for her. You can take her. Um, everything is fine. So um, I went to live with him. Okay. But when I, w- when I arrived, he lived with, he had married someone else and um, they had a daughter and then there was me so there were four of us living in this in this house before you go forward um when he suggested that you're gonna stay with him Mm -hmm. what did your mother say my mom was was in agreement with everyone because it was a it was a discussion because, family discussion. Yeah, it was a family discussion. Yeah. Uguti, okay, now are we all are we all agreeing because this man has been paying the fees, has been you know did supporting, right. did everything. So yeah. there's nothing that we can we can't say he can't do it because in our culture there are also those things of paying if um a man gets a, a girl pregnant. But my my family is not that much into that. But as long as the father is supportive and all of that. So that was like, oh, okay, he's already done his part, if yeah. I can put it like that. So it's fine. He's, he's, he's shown that he's capable of taking care of. Obviously, there were weekends and holidays that I would go and visit. It was arranged like that. It wasn't like a forever thing. So the relationship between my maternal family wasn't cut off. You know, he was not like taking me entirely. So, yeah, I went to go and live in Umtata. And, yeah, as I said, that he was married and there was a child. And as soon as I arrived there, I I realized that there are problems in terms of um, they were physically fighting. They were Mm. fighting. And it's it's something that I was never used to. Um, My uncles were married and my my uncle, my, my, my grandfather and my grandmother were married. I'd never seen them fight. I'd never seen them shout each other. So it was quite a foreign concept for me to see adults fighting. Um, I knew that when you get a beating as a child, you obviously did something wrong. So in my seven-year-old mind, I thought maybe my mom, um, my stepmother now did something wrong. This is why she's getting a beating, you know. So I, I was now introduced to that life where they would fight, they would have these fights, and I would have to rescue the baby and run away with her to to go to the neighbors and just stay there until the storm has calmed. And when they are fine, and then I would take the baby back and life just continues as if nothing happened. I know at the time there were no a lot of cell phones, (laughs) like social media today, but... I know that at some point you were able to visit back your yeah, fam- the yeah. family that you grew up with. Mm-hmm. Did you not try to tell them? Um, but all of this, um, okay, so this other day, they had this huge fight. It This happened like as soon as I arrived, maybe I arrived in, in January and in, in March, like in February already, they're already fighting and all of that. And I knew that I'm only going to be able to see my mom maybe in the holidays or when she comes to visit on the weekends, you know, like when she comes to see me, when she gets a chance to come and see me. So I didn't have a chance to to be able to tell them what is going on. And I was still a baby. I was I was young. I was mm. only seven at that time. It was very difficult yes, for you. Yes, it was very difficult. It was, it was a difficult concept for me. As I said earlier, it was like, it was a normal thing in the sense that maybe my mom, did something wrong. This is why now she's getting beaten because that's how I grew up. Mm. Um, you get a hiding. If you don't do your dishes or you don't do that, you get a hiding, you know? So that's how it was in my mind. Did you some point try to intervene in the fight or you would just no. run away all the time? No, I would just run away. I would just run away. But it was very traumatic for you, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Because all the sounds and yeah, the yeah. noises, mm. 
you hearing people <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> we yeah. are laughing but it's actually yeah, it was a lot serious. it yeah. was a lot it was a lot jeez man then what happened next? So um, this other day now, they had this huge fight that ended up um, my, my stepmother taking the baby and just packing up a few clothes and leaving. So she left and then it was on that night that my dad raped me. And when it happened, I didn't, it was like, oh, maybe this is also a part of what happens to daughters and their fathers. Um, I thought it was, for me, it was just like a normal thing that happens. Yes, it was extremely painful. It was, it, it was just a lot, but I, in, I, I never thought that it was wrong. Pause. Mm. The same night that your stepmother left is yes. the same night that your dad yes. raped you. Yes. <sighs> That's crazy. Yeah. So... To you, it was like, maybe this is how things should be yes, like. Yes, so this is how things happen. I was also thinking about my cousins who were females. I'm like, okay, maybe my uncles do this to them. Like, But no one, like, why didn't they tell me, you know? So that is how I, I got to keep quiet because I thought it was a normal thing and no one talks about it. Seven years old. Seven years old. How old was your dad? Were you aware? I know. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Do you remember that night, though? Yes, I do. I do. Are you able to take me through? Um. Yes, because uh, okay. So we were we were watching TV. It was after he had a fight, and we were just I was just there watching TV. And I remember now because we, we lived in a commune setting. So each each room, the, it was a big house, and then each room had a family of their own. And I would sleep on the floor with the baby when stepmom was home, and they would sleep on the bed. <clears throat> so um, this night now, my dad calls me to come and sleep on the bed, you know, because stepmom and baby are not home. Mm. So... Um, and then all of a sudden, he's asking that I, I come on top of him. And as soon as I'm on top of him, he's, he's on top of me. You know, it was just like a split of a second thing. He's on top of me and already he's penetrating me. You know, it was just a quick process, but painful one. Um, but for me, it seemed as though it was not ending, you know, and that happened and in the bathroom, when he was done, in the bathroom, there was already water inside. I don't know. Maybe it was when I was watching TV that, um, that he, he went and got water into the bathtub. And he put me into that water and he washed me thoroughly. He washed me. And probably that washing took about an hour because I f now when I realized he was... He was trying to get rid of the evidence in case anything happened. And I remember the following day, I think it was it was a Saturday. And I, I, obviously, I was going to go play with my friends. Um, but he was like, no, you're not allowed to go and play today. And I could also feel my body wasn't allowing me to go and and play. So that day, um, he spent nursing me of my pain and all of that. So that was the first experience. That's very painful, man. Mm -hmm. That's very painful. But how did you digest the whole experience, you know? Because that was new to you. Mm -hmm. You had no idea whether that was rape. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was very difficult. It was very difficult because, uh, now I started to miss home, you know, I started to miss not having a father anymore. If, if this is what having a father meant, I didn't want it in terms of the physical pain because I, I just was like, no, this cannot like mommy like you know, like as a child, like when yeah. is the stepmother, even with the stepmother, it wasn't all nice when she was around when it's just me and her you know it was just a typical stepmother and daughter relationship it wasn't nice but 
I, I missed her. Like I wanted her to come back because I knew that when she's not here, this doesn't happen. You know, it doesn't happen when she's around. Um, because all these months that I have been here already, none none of this happened. But now when she's gone home, this happens. So in the house, it was just the two of you alone? Yes, it was just the two of you. Did you us. perhaps try to run away by any chance? No, no, I did not. I did not. <sighs> was it the last time he did that to you? No, it was not the last time. That was the first, that was the beginning of many more times because my stepmother did eventually come back and life was good. They would have their fights and all of that. But then whenever my, my stepmother decided to go to Norman, I'm just going to visit my family. And then he would get an opportunity unless um, I had gone to other family members now. His sister also lived around, so she would, like, invite me a weekend so I knew my cousins from that side so I would go there then I would he would not have the chance to to rape me did you try to tell somebody by no. any chance no even your mom even my mom and my mom would constantly visit but I I just didn't have did he threaten you no, he didn't threaten me at that time. Did he give you money like so, so that Definitely, you can Definitely. Just... I was, at school, I was the child who had everything. I was the child, like, my, my dad wore brands. So, like, I had sneakers, branding, you know, all of that. And after the incident, he would take me to a restaurant, you know, buy clothes and then come back. But then... In, in the child of a mind, in, in the mind of a child then, it didn't click that he was actually manipulating the situation. So I just like, oh, okay, this happened yesterday. Healing, there would, there would be a day in between for my healing or whatever. Mm. I would be in bed and then the next day it's shopping, it's this and that and the other. So this became normal to you? It became normal, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know what's confusing me is that your dad was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, this is a person that teaches young kids. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you would think that this is a person that's supposed to be protecting kids mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. inspiring kids and teaching kids what's wrong, what's yeah. right. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But now he's doing this to his own daughter. Yeah. And apparently the school that he left... Um, the previous year so that he could go to Mtata with me. He had done the same thing, but it was like under the carpet thing, you know, and they advised, it, advised him to just resign and go look um, at a school elsewhere. And also that family didn't take it, you know, further and it just ended there and he just relocated and life basically continued for him. Let's go a little bit forward. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think was the problem with him? I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you think maybe he was possessed or something? Like, I feel like you would say someone is possessed if if they did that once, you know, if it was like a once-off thing. But to continue doing it for seven years, I don't think... <laughs> you you could say that they're possessed like i don't know like i don't I, I i don't know how to i don't know when you look back do you think you're the only no girl? definitely not definitely not because i remember um in the year now 2002 my mom, so during that year, my mom could see that, no, man, my child is not happy, even though she could not pinpoint. Mm. She says that she saw that I was losing weight and now I am reserved. When she would come and visit, I was no longer that bubbly person. So she's like, okay, maybe it's because of the stepmother. So let me just take her. So she took me and I went to live with her. But then there were some weekends that he would ask that I go visit him. He's buying me clothes and all of that and that I need to fit the clothes so I should go to him. So whenever an opportunity arose from there, he would take it and, and rape me. And then, um, I remember in those days when I used to visit him, there were school girls that would come and um, 
things happened, you know. I, now I remember that they would be having sex, you know, um, with me in the room and I would be sleeping. So there were, like, schoolgirls in uniform would constantly come into the house and... While you were in the room? While I was in the room, yes. How long did this last for? Did it happen for months or for years? It happened for years. It happened for years because I, 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 I ended up not living with him anymore. I even went to boarding school. But whenever there was there was something, maybe at home there's a celebration that needs to be done and he's buying the clothes for that. Um, when I have to go to him, for he, he always insisted that I need to go so that I, have, I, I fit the clothes and all of that. So that was when it would happen. That's how it, it stretched to happen for seven years. So he would find a way to yes. see you naked mm-hmm. by you fitting clothes next to him. And then he would take the advantage. But it's quite shocking because you speak about the kids that used to come there. I don't know what they're doing. When you look at them, were they doing grade 11, grade 12? Definitely, they were grade 11, yes. They were like, because he taught like at a high school. He taught at a high school. So it was it was like grade 11s because they would come dressed in their uniform. Do you think maybe he was spoiling them, maybe buying them at time? Because at time at the time yeah, was at a the thing. time was a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Jeez, man. Yeah. But what's shocking, because I think this is crazy. That's why I'm thinking maybe he was possessed. Mm-hmm. How will he, you know, do something like that, invite kids from his school yeah. where he teaches mm-hmm. and have sex with them mm-hmm. while you are in the room? Yeah. And you can literally hear a grade 11-year-old screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know that that also happens yes. to you. Yes, yes. You said this happened for how many years? For seven years. For seven years. Because in grade in grade seven now, at the, at the school that I was in, it ended at grade seven. It was a primary school. And there was the year-end function when you're leaving to another school. So he was, like, again, buying me the clothes for that function. So I had to go to Mtata, and he raped me and... Unfortunately, fortunately, I fell pregnant. Um, I had started my period, and I remember the previous year when I started my period, I went to an adult to tell them that I'm preg- I am I started my period, and they just warned me to stay away from boys. You know, most go go dala. They didn't really like sit you down and tell you that when you start your periods, this is what happens and whatnot. So they just told me to stay away from boys. And I remember there was a story that. Um, we were read about an uncle touching their niece. And in my head, I thought, oh, the uncle is wrong. It's supposed to be a dad who does that, you know, to mm. their daughters, not uncles. And I did, when I went to visit him, I did tell him that, listen, I heard something like this, and I think you are doing the same thing. And then that's when the threatening started. And the threats were about, I'm never going to buy you clothes again. Um mm. You're going to be a liar. Um, no one is going to love you. You're just going to be an orphan, basically, you yeah. know. So, and then I was quiet now. I was like, okay, no, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not telling one about this until the next year that I went to visit him and I fell pregnant. And so I fell pregnant. My mom was told that I'm pregnant. I got sick at school. Like, I also didn't even know that I am pregnant got sick at school and I was taken to a nearby hospital clinic and there How old were you? I am 13. Now. 13 now. Yes. Okay. 13 and I was taken to that school, um to that hospital and the doctor was like, "Ish, I don't know what is happening, but just in case, let's just do a pregnancy test, you know." And he did do a pregnancy test and it was positive. And my mom had to literally explain to me how a person gets pregnant because I didn't know how it happens. And it was when my mom explained to me the process of how a person gets pregnant. I was like, oh, that thing, that is what my dad does to me. And he's been doing it since I started living with him. Jeez, man. So your own dad made you pregnant. So how were you able to explain to your mom? Because probably you had that chat 
Um, I don't know. Like, I was just like, mom, because my mom started, obviously, as a black parent. Yeah. She started by shouting as to how could you get pregnant at such a young age and whatnot and whatnot. And me, I thought pregnancy was a sickness, you know. Mm. Um, she just had to explain to me what what is wrong with me because the doctor said I'm pregnant. So, um and I'm like, mom, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, what do you mean I'm going to have a baby? Like, what do you mean? And it was when she she took me through the process that, no, man, don't make me a fool. You know, like when a boy does this and that, I'm like, oh, Mina, the only thing of a boy that I've ever seen is my dad's. And what you are explaining is what my dad does to me. And she, well, she was obviously shocked. Um and then I just told her, Guti, this has been happening like since 2001, ever since I lived with him. But I mean, I thought it was normal. I thought it was something that was supposed to be happening. And then last year, he started threatening me that you would never love me, that you would get rid of me, you know, all of that. So that's when I decided not to tell anyone about what was happening to me. Um, and then my mom, that's when my mom reassured me that, no, man, that is a lie. I still love you and I, I'm here to protect you and all of that. And that that's how the process of going to the police and all of that began. So your mom went to the police? Yes, on my behalf. To open a case? Yes. So how did your dad take this? He obviously denied it. Okay. He denied that um, this happened. And because it had happened over a long period of time, I had already bathed. I had, you know, there was no evidence on me except for the fetus that was growing inside of me. So um, it was basically decided by everyone, family, social workers, you know, that um, I need to get rid of the pregnancy. First of all, it's my dad's baby, and it will also help in terms of the court case in, in evidence purposes. Yeah. So, But even before that was done, I had a miscarriage. So that didn't work in my favor. So now it was just my word against his. Jeez, man. Have you ever thought now that if maybe you kept the baby, how things were going to be like? Yo, like if it was now and I would also have made the same decision for myself Yeah. because I can't imagine, first of all, what, what would I call the baby? Is it my sister? Is it my child? Like, you know, it was just the dynamics of it. Like it was, it, and obviously it was going to be a constant reminder of, something painful that has happened to me and like even now i would have decided to terminate the baby the baby yes your mom was probably very angry at him definitely the fights were like literally yeah. on another level yeah. but did he try um obviously you did mention that he defended himself mm. did it escalate to a point whereby you guys are going to court now Yes, we went to court, but uh, justice system of South Africa. Um, we reported the case in 2007, um, yeah. but we oh, I was only able to go to court in 2011 when I was 17 years old. So all those years in between, it was all, no, go back. He's not ready. This is missing. That is missing. It was just a lot of up and downs yeah. up until 2011. But then even then, I was not allowed to be in court physically because I was still young. Yeah. Um, so I was in another room and through an intermediary that was I was able to, to, to share my testimony. And your dad was walking freely. Freely all those years. And I'm probably sure he was doing the same thing even... I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Jeez, but that's crazy, man. Why would your dad do something like yeah. that to you? I mean, he's supposed to love you. He's supposed to, to protect. protect you. Yes. And I'm sure that his family, they were defending him. Yeah, definitely. Um, they were. To say, no, we are una maga. Mm. You know, they even, I'm probably sure they even thought that your family, your mom's family, they were trying to They use, influenced her yeah. because it was a thing of... Maybe because she she was no the one that didn't get the marriage, you know. So now she's using the child to yeah, but she's being spiteful, yeah, but. 
So it was like that for many years. Like I think even now it's still like that because we have no communication whatsoever. Was he found guilty? He was found guilty eventually, I think 2016, I think so. And he spent, but he's already out. He, he got out in 2023. He was in jail for how long? I think from 2016 to 2023. Yeah, probably eight years. Yeah. 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 Do you guys have any communication by any no. chance? No. Would you face him? I did. I did. Because in and in prison, they have these programs that they have to do, mm. um, asking for forgiveness and all of that. So, yes, I, I was able to face him. I was able to, to tell him everything that I felt. And, yeah. But there, there was and there's still no remorse from his side. So he didn't even apologize? He did, but I just think he, he, apologized, he apologized because he was in the process. He was in that process. He needed to do it so that parole and all of those things, it was just beneficial for him, you know. So, no, I'm sorry for doing this. But as soon as he got out, like for someone who, you know, who would have apologized in jail and all of that, you know, should have came back and yeah. be like, okay, I'm out. What can we? But none of that has ever, ever, ever happened since 2023 when I heard that he, he got out. When you faced them, did you try ask him that? Why did you do that to me? I did, but it was a question that he was never able to, to answer. Yes. Do you think he's sick? Probably yes. I think so. I think yeah. he is. Because you know, I've I've spoken to multiple people that came from jail, and mm. most of them, jail literally changed their mindsets. Mm. You know, um, so I'm only thinking that the jail change his mindset, or is he gonna continue? You know, with no, he's, he's definitely doing. gonna continue. He's definitely gonna continue because, um, in as much as the correctional like it's correctional services it's for them to correct their mind and all of that but even how he was just treating pre people in prison um the things that he did and even now that he's is out it just shows that that system for him did not work it did not work the reason why they call it a correctional service, you yeah. know, it's for them to correct the mind, to understand why do you rob, why do you do this? But for him, I don't think it, it worked. It's, it's, it's a deeper issue than that. Which service do you think would work for him? Uh, I have no idea. I think, like, beyond repairs, if I could put it that way, yeah. because, no, he's just not okay. Because I remember there's um, some family from his side who, who told me that there was a celebration of some sort that mm -hmm. happened. And when it was his turn to speak, he spent the whole um, time that he was given to talk about how much I have ruined his life. So that's why I say that he's beyond repairs. I don't know what could ever if prison didn't help him, then I don't know what could ever help him. Obviously, you're growing up, you're after 17, 18, um, you go into high school, varsity and stuff. Did it not really give you flashbacks? Um, it was trauma? the worst. It was the worst because um, it's, it started in 2007. So... Um, <clears throat> In, uh, I'm, I'm 13 years old. I am a teenager. Um, my boobs are starting, are coming to, starting to come out. How I am, you know, structured is starting to come out. And boys notice, you know. But I was never able to to participate in that because there was still that trauma. I knew that any male figure is here to hurt me. You know, that's how I, I, I lived through my adolescent stage, through my teenage stage, up until my adulthood, until I got um, complete healing. That's uh, that's when I was I was comfortable around male figures. Otherwise, since 2007 until 2017. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was just, I, I, I didn't enjoy my childhood. I didn't enjoy anything. Yeah. Yeah. You speak about healing. How were you able to heal? Um, healing um, came to me in, in, in forgiveness, in the concept of forgiveness, because I, I got to understand what forgiveness was, mm. that the reason why I am seeing myself in this place that I'm in, not being able to date, not being able to, to do whatever, is because, first of all, I was, I was angry at him. I was angry at myself. I was angry at my family. So I was like, <clears throat> I, I, I have, I, I am, I've got so much bitterness in, in, inside of me. So now I'm not able to continue with life. But then the moment I, 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 I realized that forgiveness is not actually about him. You know, it's mm -hmm. about me. It's about me for me to be, to be good, to be better. I needed to forgive, to let go. Then I can start focusing on my healing. So the day that I decided that I forgive him, I release him, I release the bondage he has over me. Let me just move on with my life. That's when I was able to start my own healing journey and just move on with yeah. life. Yes. Are you married now? No. No, but I am in a relationship. Was it not difficult for you, though, to find a way to, you know, be with the guy and, you know, try to build a relationship? No, it was not because this relationship came at a time when I was, I was, I was okay with my healing. Like, mm. I was okay. I had taken a decision that, okay, let me wait and see as to... Do I deserve to be in a relationship? Do I want to be in a relationship? You know, all of that. So it came at a time when I was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. And like, I've never had issues in terms of like, I just put that what, whatever happened between my dad and I is mm. just, it, it happened and there's nothing I can do about it. And in terms of the trauma I've dealt with it, I am fine with it. Now I'm able to, to just be another person to this person, give him whatever he deserves because he's giving me whatever I deserve. So it was just still is the, the relationship, like there's nothing that, there's nothing that we've ever fought about mm. that has got to do with what my dad did to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like I am, I, I, I made a decision that I would not let it ruin, like mm. it's already ruined enough. So I would not let it ruin now with this part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. For somebody who's watching this, they, they went through what you went through. Mm. What would you say to them? Um, fortunately for them, um, it's, it's, it's happening at a time like this where we are speaking out about it. Mm. They know about it. They know that it's wrong. GBV is a, is a worldwide topic that is spoken about. So I would just encourage them to speak out, you know, to speak out. And there are always people there to listen. Mm. Unfortunately for us, you didn't even know where to begin, who to go to, because I remember I struggled a lot with um, psychologists and mental health people, you know. Yeah. I struggled a lot because I was like, um, you, didn't, you don't know what I, I went through. You don't know it physically. You learned about it. You studied it. You studied that mm. when a person is raped, this is how they're going to act out you know this is what they're going to do but i believe that every person has a a different way of coping because i had my own ways that i used to think that this is how i am i am coping but i would just encourage them Oguti, it's a very difficult but try and try and and forgive mm -hmm. try and forgive um I, I'm talking for ex, from experience that without accepting, because whether we like it or not, it's not going to change, yeah. unfortunately. It's not going to change the fact that I was raped by my father, the fact that he took my virginity, the fact that the first ever pregnancy that I'm ever going to experience was from him. It's not going to change. And there is 
absolutely no point in me dwelling in that because it's not going to change. The best thing I can do for myself, the best way to show myself love is to forgive, to accept and let go and let go so that that is what I would encourage them to do obviously speak about it it's not going to be an easy journey as I said that it took me from 20 20, 2007 up until 2017 a whole 10 years of healing and all of that up until I came to a place to this place that I am now in Cecil thank you so much for coming I really appreciate your story I'm sure you're gonna inspire other people there you're going to open a lot of women's mm. uh, eyes and they will be able to know what they're going to do uh, through your story yeah. but thank you so much for being brave and sharing your story thank you you're welcome